Land acknowledgements are important. They're done to encourage us to think and to act. We acknowledge that this rug was woven and this film was produced on the traditional territory of the Anishinaabek Nation, the people of the three fires known as Ojibwe, Adawa, and Potawatomi Nations. Further, we give thanks to the Chippewas of Saugeen and the Chippewas of Nawash, known collectively as the Saugeen Ojibwe Nation, the traditional keepers of this land. We endeavor to make reconciliation a reality by accepting our cultural differences and working in harmony with the Saugeen Ojibwe to smooth the path before us. We need to learn from the traditional keepers of the land that we are living on. As the earth sustains us, we in turn must sustain the earth, using only just enough. We need to shift from thinking we have a right to the resources of the earth to having the responsibility to care for the earth. Hey, John, before we do anything else, I just want to thank you for wearing a red shirt. I think that's hilarious. I didn't even think of it. But, but looking at us now, I mean, we're, we're matched. You're the yeah. blue and I'm the hawk. That's right. The blue, coal and I'm the red hawk. So the project is, I was reading um, Catherine Hayhoe's book, and a good part of what she talks about is how to talk about climate change and climate action. And she was really focused on the importance of talking and starting where they're at and talking about things that are of interest to them. And she gave the example of a young woman who wanted to know how to talk to her grandmother about climate change. And Catherine asked her, well, what does your grandma like to do? And the response was, she likes to knit. And Catherine said, you know, there are people out there that are knitting warming striped scarves based on Ed Hawking's science and research. So that got me interested and I researched Ed Hawkins and found out about warming stripes and how he had taken kind of the average temperatures and created these amazing visual images to be able to depict how cl climate was actually changing and that you could do it for your own area. And so I contacted John and said, could you get me the numbers for the Owen Sound Wyerton area? And so this doesn't just represent Wyerton or Rowan Sound, it represents an area of maybe 150 to 200 kilometers would be exactly what's happening here in terms of the magnitude of the temperatures. But if you look as far south as Delhi and Niagara to the south or North Bay and Sudbury to the north of us, all the temperatures go up and down year in, year out, synchronously. They're all identical. So it, it is a representation of this part of Western Ontario. The midnight is the absolute coldest temperature we've had. And that is an average temperature of around three for the whole year, three degrees Celsius. Really. This looks like a lot of work. Yeah, and so there's two threads on my shuttle. So, so each going across the loom is two, and each year is, I think it is 22 threads. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yes. And so John, can you get me local temperatures? He was terrific and um, gave me a list of temp average temperatures starting in 1880. And I know that Ed Hawking does his work often starting at the 1900s. But when I looked at the 1880 and I realized that our home, our century log home was originally built by the Skinners in the early 1880s, um, it just kind of clicked for me that that's where I wanted to start. And then I also looked at the numbers and realized that they were building their home in a period that was so cold, just terribly cold and kind of could imagine what that was like for them. Um, and particularly <laughs> because when I worked our way th my way through the numbers, um, we rebuilt that century log home in the mid seventies 
And that again was a cold period, but not near as cold as what the Skinners had when they were originally building the house. So, so the rug, when it's done, will be approximately 39 inches wide and 70 and a bit long, almost six feet long, um, which means that each year that I've depicted is about a half an inch. So kind of what did I learn? And first of all, I think this process reinforced for me the importance of stories. Um, when talking about climate change and talking about climate act action and really helping people explore what, what their thinking is around this. I mean, for me, I, as each year I was thinking about where was I? I mean, I can pinpoint when my family and I came to Canada on a boat crossing the Atlantic in February. <laughs> um, and it was not a warm year. Um, you know, I can pinpoint when my children were born, when they went to kindergarten. You know, and so it was actually taking me back through my life, which I think has been a, a really interesting journey. Um, and it made me think that maybe this could be a tool for other people to do the same kind of process. One of the stories I like to tell is the stories of my family. Because my grandparents on both my mom and dad's side were all born in this decade, this cold decade in the 1880s. My mom and dad were born in 1919 and 1924. I was born in 1950 and my wife in 1952. We were born in this warm section. Then our kids, we had them in the early 1980s and it was cool again. But my grandkids, they've both been born in the 2010s. And this is now the hottest period in this entire 140 years. And we know from the models that this is only going to get warmer from here on in. But at the same time, as they're doing that life story, they're also looking at kind of the, the changing climate, the changing temperatures, um, and bringing the two together, which I think is really important. This one is the global image going back to 1850 to 2021. And it's, you know, obviously the globe is a huge area, um, and it really is kind of in your face in terms of what's happening. I mean, it goes from predominantly blue, cold, 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 getting warmer, and then into the reds. It's just really, really obvious when you look at that one. One of the things that I felt I needed right now, and that's why I did it, is that there was a lot of climate talk and a lot of words. And I was feeling, beginning to feel somewhat overwhelmed with just the amount of words and I needed something concrete. So when I read this um, in Catherine's book, it felt like this is something really concrete that I can do to, to ground myself in all of these words. Um, and um, in terms of what hopefully some other people might get something out of, is I hear a lot of yeah, climate change may be an issue, but it's really not a big deal for us here. Or, well, we've always had hot or cold days, right? Um, that's not unusual. That's just the way it goes. It's the ebb and flow. And I think this can show that it's more than that. Um, because if you go to the beginning of the rug, that's the only place you have the really, really cold weather. And the cold weather gets less and less cold as we progress to the end of the rug in 2021. There's less of the really hot days at the beginning, or years at the beginning, and there's way more as I progress to the end. Like if you just look at this little section, oh, that's the hottest, uh, third hottest, second hottest. I mean, these are really hot temperatures. Um, they're not, they're just a little bit hot. They're the real hots. All right, so what am I gonna do with this thing? It's gonna be done probably within the next week or so. Um, actually, I'm going to do another small piece to go with it. And, and that is because the on the rug 
the colors are all mixed kind of like, you know, first is a really hot, then there's a cool. And, and so, so they're not consecutive. And I thought it might be really good to have a very small piece, maybe 10 inches by eight, 17, because there's, there's 17 colors, um, 10 inches by 17, showing the colors in sequence. So going from the very cold, working its way to less and less and less cold, to the neutral, right up to the very hot. I had wondered if it could be a good partner and piggyback with the climate engagement wheel. So this is the, the what to do climate wheel and I wondered whether the rug could partner with the climate wheel um, when we're doing climate engagement workshops. And the wheel was developed by a, lo a group of local folks, um, including myself. And I think it's a really good follow-up to the film Resilience. If there's one thing we can do about climate change, it's to talk about it. So let's talk about climate change. What is there for the next seven generations to come and those little ones yet to come? That's my concern for all of the people all over the world. Not only my Anishinaabek people, it's for everybody. And you can see there's a first peak, which Anne's rug captures here, followed by a cooling period, a little bit of warming, but not quite as high, and then a second peak of warming, which is captured here in the 1940s and 50s into the 60s, followed by a cooling period. And then as we keep going, we see here's the warming period, and that's up to 2022, and the models show you where we're heading. So that the very end of Anne's story here is just really the beginning of the really warm temperatures that we're heading into. And the models show the good case scenario, which is this black line. So if we hit 2050, net zero 20 by 2050, we're going to stop off and we're going to end up with stable temperatures, much higher than we've ever seen before, but they will stabilize. If we don't, we just keep on burning fossil fuels, heading up and up and up, we're heading to Armageddon. So Armageddon, huh. Well, maybe that was part of why I decided to do this. Um, because so often I would hear when climate change and the need for climate action was being talked about locally, what I would hear is, well, you know, we're okay. It, it, you know, that might be a problem somewhere else, but, but we're doing okay. And the reality is, is no, we're not. And yes, it is happening. Um, and we're going to get the impact. And if we don't talk about it, we're not going to do anything about it. As I said earlier, it was definitely a therapeutic process for me. Um, and now that it's done, and now that we're talking about what does the rug say, I think it actually is, for me, making me more hopeful and more confident about being able to get back out there again and talk about the need for climate action, talk about that it is relevant for us, not just relevant for people out there or away from here.